grace and peace be with you today on this Trinity Sunday. And today we are thankful for many things, not the least of which is a cloud cover, which makes it a little cooler and uh, not quite so much breeze as we had last week. Two announcements. Um, Friday's uh, blood drive went very, very well. And thank you to Janine Chuka and her volunteers who made everything run so smoothly. So we're thankful for the gift of life that many of us were able to make on Friday on behalf of others. And the sermon that you will hear today was written by our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton. Um, all ELCA congregations will be hearing the same sermon today, either read by a pastor or um, watched and heard on video. So we are thankful to her today for this sermon. Worship begins with order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. 
almighty creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth is a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. All the wind swept from God, swept over the face of the water. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. And they called the light to say, The darkness he called night. And it was evening, and there was morning in the first day. And God said, Let there be a dawn in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dawn and separated the waters that were with the waters that were above the river, and it was so. God called the morning the sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth, that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind, bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome and of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two greater lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and it was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters of every living creature that moves, of every kind that makes the water swarm, and every winged bird of every God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning in the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over living, every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon all the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You 
shall have them both. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every plant to go And it was so. God saw that everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. There was evening, and there was morning, and the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished with all their multitudes. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done and he had done. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth and they were. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. I think to the Lord, listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of God and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you. From Presiding Bishop Elizabeth A lot has changed since the last Trinity Sunday, not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the shooting of Ahmaud Arbery. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Sean Reed, Tony McDay have also been killed and how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God. Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind swept, a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. The Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work rooted the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. 
God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity probably won't until I've finished my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship, within God and flowing from God. Creation is God's decision not to look after God's own self but to focus God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. We are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God, and God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us, and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, alive, and vital. We must reject calls for colorblindness that diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors, since God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image means all of us are part of this relational triune God. And God is the Word made flesh. Our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus, in his passion, still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed, handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and passion of our Lord crucifixion of so many, too many, black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. God is the wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation. God is the breath of God that was breathed into the world's first creature, or into the first earth creature, Adam. God is the breath of Jesus. And now, church, as we, the baptized, those of us baptized in the Trinity, are the breath of God, and we show up. We work for an end to violence, the violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. We work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading, in some cases, as protests. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and inequity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, it is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires at the stores and workplaces, churches and property, but we ask the spirit to kindle in us in the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our but we may remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, it's the peace God alone can give that we work for, and that gives us the strength and courage to live.
until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story. We are not open to the relationship God wants to shower, to share, to lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a Trinity, as the God who has brought us into relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. It's actually a promise, and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the community and the communion of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation of God's overwhelming love revealed in the dance of the Trinity. Hear us, O oh God. God of creation, you call everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Open us to recognize and act to bring about the vital healing of the earth needs. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. In our hearts, plant the seeds of shalom and instill wisdom in advocates who work for justice in often neglected or despised communities, especially Native peoples, 
people of color, children and youth, the disabled, and older adults. We pray for peace to settle upon the cities of our nation and to see with new eyes and listen with new ears to those who are different from us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is God of care, you created us in your image. Help us see you, your likeness in one another. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, especially those who will not return to jobs they once held, those recuperating from surgeries, the grieving, those whose fears have drive them to join hate groups, the COVID-19 sick, and those in need of the blood donations. We pray for our state that its citizens will observe necessary COVID precautions out of care and respect for Hear us, O God, in mercy of his God of compassion, to accompany this body of faith as the rhythms of summer begin, protect all who travel, renew all who will enjoy a time of Sabbath, and shelter all who will not be protected from the sun's heat. Hear us, O God, in mercy of his God of compassion, to comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all times and in our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, of those two deep words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. <laughs> gathers for the celebration of Holy Communion. We hear again the story of God's mighty acts and of the love shown us in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We were given assurance of our Lord's presence through the gift of his Holy Spirit. And now we bring to you this same bread of life, that you may be strengthened through your participation in the body of Christ. We pray as Jesus first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As often as we eat of this bread and drink from the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And may Almighty God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and always.
broken for you. Thank you.